time, I think there's going to be, we'll have uh, floating spaceports like ocean spaceports. SpaceX may attempt to conduct launches offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk idealistically envisions a thousand starships leaving Earth every two years, when Earth has close encounters with Mars, to facilitate humanity's first permanent migration to another planet. By all accounts, that scene will certainly be glorious, as if Star Trek has come to life. However, like the moon, there's a dark side to everything. That is, every Starship launch will be incredibly loud. With only around 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster, the sound level, even from 8 kilometers away, will be around 132 decibels. Imagine the average chainsaw and how loud that can get. The closer you get to that Starship launch, the more powerful the sound waves become, which can be enough to damage a building or cause bodily harm to you. So the question is, how can we come up with a sound solution? Elon Musk has a great idea. A few years ago, Musk and SpaceX have shared their vision for a future in which spaceports are positioned within convenient reach of major hubs around the world, making it possible for SpaceX to operate a globe-spanning network of hypersonic point-to-point -point travel, using Starship's ferrying people from destinations as far flung as Beijing to New York in around 30 minutes. So I think probably most of the launch sites long term will be kind of ocean or sea spaceports. So like maybe, maybe located like 20 miles, 30 miles offshore. And th this would al allow Starship to connect any cities that are uh, on the ocean or on, on the sea and, and, and have a high flight rate but w without disturbing people too much. You know, I think people are willing to have something that's loud occasionally, but if you want to have it uh, frequently, then it, it, it probably needs to be off offshore. Musk said. To realize this, in August of 2020, SpaceX bought two semi-submersible drilling rigs from Valeris PLC for three and a half million US each. In keeping with the lofty goal, they were renamed Deimos and Phobos after the two moons of Mars. At that point, Musk explained, floating super heavy class spaceports for Mars, Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. The oil rigs are currently located in South Texas. Texas at the port of Brownsville, which is close to SpaceX's Starbase facility where Starship is under development. After a series of delays from the FAA's environmental assessment on the ground for Starship, this idea seems amazing. But it's worth noting that refurbishing oil rigs will come with an expensive price tag. I hope we don't go bankrupt building them, Musk said via Twitter. Now, let's take a look at the progress of SpaceX's oil rig. It has tried to convert a pair of oil rigs into sea-going Starship spaceports for a couple of years now, but the progress stopped around earlier this year. For almost one year now, both of the oil rigs have been sitting in a port in Mississippi. Phobos is the furthest ahead in the early stage of the launch platform development, with a lot of its main equipment removed, while the other rig hasn't had too much work done. There is still a lot that it needs to go through in order to be considered fully operational. SpaceX plans to build a super heavy class launch tower that will be capable of supporting the booster as it returns from space on top of each oil rig. The tower will be similar to the one at the Boca Chica launch pad that is capable of stacking the Starship atop the 230 foot tall booster. Engineers are aiming to develop a fully reusable Starship slash super heavy launch vehicle capable of being reused at least three times a day. For that purpose, SpaceX SpaceX will design a launch tower that could quickly catch the booster after it launches the Starship spacecraft to orbit. We're going to try to catch the super heavy booster with the launch tower arm, using the grid fins to take control, Musk said. Musk once said in May of 2021 that the ocean spaceport Deimos was under construction for a test launch in 2022. However, given the current situation, it is clear that these platforms are unlikely to be used before late 2021. Nevertheless, there's something inherently appealing about a plan of converting oil rigs, which are symbols of an industry doomed to decline, into bustling spaceports, which evoke visions of a futuristic era of easy space travel to the moon or Mars. And as it turns out, the idea of spinning offshore oil rigs into spaceports
Hearts is not new. From the 1960s all the way to the 80s, the Luigi Broglio Space Center launched payloads into space from a converted oil platform off the coast of Kenya. The multinational company Sea Launch converted the mobile drilling rig Odyssey into a launch platform in 1997. Dozens of rockets have blasted payloads to space from Odyssey, along with a few failed launches. Florida's Department of Commerce considered creating floating spaceports on offshore rigs in 1989, but ultimately decided the approach is too costly in the short run to service the anticipated market. In 1996, a study published in IEEE Spectrum recommended that Russia marry its agile Soviet rocket design with the best oil platform technology that may provide an altogether new means of getting big satellites into orbit. According to Ala Potsnikova, a professor of law at the Scandinavian Institute of Maritime Law who has extensively researched sea-based launch facilities as well as their legal and technological implications, what is really new in SpaceX projects is that all other projects launched small satellites into orbit and some suborbital objects. Meanwhile, SpaceX is planning to eventually launch missions to the moon, Mars, and into hypersonic orbits around Earth, some of which would carry humans, which is quite different from earlier projects, Poznikova noted. If this tantalizing dream were to ever become reality, it would reshape the space sector in a myriad of ways, including causing disturbance and noise around busy Starship spaceports with cacophonous liftoffs and sonic booms from returning spacecraft. For this reason, among others, SpaceX is experimenting with less disruptive offshore launches and landings. Not only will it limit noise and nuisance to surrounding communities, launching on the water can provide strategic advantages, including minimizing public safety risks, air traffic interference, and so on. Interestingly enough, mobile oil rigs can also move easily to new locations tailored to the needs of space missions. They may float or even self-propel and are built to be stable on the water. Of course, SpaceX must have a system which allows stabilizing the platform for the launch. They would also need to have some support vessels to ensure initiating and control of the launch. Someone needs to push the button and it can't be done in immediate immediate proximity to the launch rig. Once these spaceports are operational, they will definitely change the way we travel every day, much like airplanes did. Hopefully, that day will be just around the corner. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.